Okay, so today um, I'm going to give uh, an interpretation of the latest talk of the town, which is a movie uh, with executive producers Michelle Obama, the first lady, the former first lady, and um, the president, Mr. Obama. So they've created this movie, and um, before I venture into the uh, the breakdown, it's um, it's important for me to say that there's really no excuse for anybody at this point in time um, to uh, in as far as the preparation for uh, for the future or what uh, is believed to be on the wait or um, upcoming the future of humanity comes if you don't get uh, warnings or teachings from uh, from the church which has its own perspective with the likes of the revelation which i think um, uh, there's a little bit of it's um, there's a little bit of tweaking of the prophecies that happened uh, out there that you could only uh, decipher if you dig deeper into a history that lasts longer than the beginning of what they called actually recorded history there's also um if you're a muslim they have their own um their own uh, prophecies and uh, predictions and expectations that they're expecting and in my opinion i usually class the islamic uh, scriptural basis and also uh, they have a lot uh, in common with christianity and yet they spend a lot uh, denying that but if you see the kind of um uh, prophetic especially prophetic and um, prophetic expectation that islam has for the future of humanity in these kinds of times it's always uh, it's not so far removed from what christianity has and it's not um there are a lot of, uh, you can see uh, the bases, uh, and they have a common origin in the beginning of the dark, um, the dark ages and the fall of Roman empires when the, um, the vandals actually got into the political uh, sphere and really played with a lot of history and a lot of religion. So uh, they're not coming so far from where Christianity is coming. If you're an um, agnostic, you have your sources. If, you are, if you're an atheist, you have your... You have your nurses and which i think is one of the things that was represented in the characters in this movie so you have your science and you have your believers uh, so the science um, had uh, represented i believe and the logical uh, logically leaning uh, part of humanity is represented by this girl who is wearing a nasa t-shirt which has a nasa logo representing the science and the discovery of uh, men in the current uh, civilization because um and also the um the boy in this movie had a t-shirt that was simply called obey which uh, i believe is also a representation of a very huge uh, percentage of humanity you have no idea how big the portion of humanity is that um is uh, following um the direction of obey they're looking at what uh, what the uh, the man at the top is saying and doing it without questions and even without even asking sometimes without even waiting for commands they're just looking and doing so I'd say 80% of humanity is like that. Then there's another 10%, uh, which is the NASA, the scientifically oriented uh, part of humanity. Then there are these uh, religious people, um, which uh, was represented by the um, the uh, inclusion of the behavioral um, the ideas, which uh, somebody referenced to spirituality. I believe spirituality comes through the use of animals like the deers, the birds. And also the use of things like, um, which I think will be a mix of things like, uh, there's a time they showed uh, something uh, which um, will probably split the conspiracy community into two. There's a time, there's a point in time, just before the, um, the first loud, um, the first loud uh, broadcast of a noise that was really disturbing everybody, that everybody had uh, the first time, just before that something happened in the sky there was a there was a red uh, light coming from one of the luminaries i believe i believe probably um, something that maybe the sun but it wasn't as bright as the sun and it looked actually like more like uh, one of the lesser lights like the moon because it, the light was not intense at all but as it continues to glow in the middle of the uh, of the sky something comes and overshadows it now whatever overshadowed it I believe would split um, also the observer into two groups. Is it the moon that overshadowed it? Or is it another uh, luminary object that is dark out there that was represented by this dark shadow? And if it was the moon, 
why was it um, immediately thereafter uh, followed by uh, the um, the events of the noise and the um, the radiation kind of sicknesses that followed thereafter? Because uh, uh, you need to understand that radiation and noise wavelength at some point they kind of operate the same way. That's why you can have a a scan of uh, pregnancy or of your inner uh, inner internal organs with a with a sound wave, and you can also have it. You can have uh, uh, your bones can be viewed by uh, an X-ray. So this kind of they are both waves. One is uh, one is um, X-ray, and another one is uh, sound. And because they are movement, they are following the same patterns. They can do almost the same kind of things. So it could be noise, and it could be also uh, X-ray waves coming from this object that that just uh, was shown overshadowing. Um, a red light, a bright, not so bright, not as bright as the sun, but maybe it was the sun which was dimmed. Whatever it was, it was overshadowed by a dark image and for some time there was an eclipse before it passed slowly. And I think it was even at night. So, but I've started in the middle. The most important tell and the most important message. And uh, I believe this movie is pregnant, just pregnant. With a message of preparation, with a message of um, of a warning, even um, uh, slight or um, I would say disclosure, because remember these are remember who the executive producers are. This is the former president and the first lady, and so they wouldn't just publish anything. Anything they handle has to go through the PR and uh, a whole group of people who are um, verifying everything that they do. Remember, they're still under protection as former former uh, rulers of the land so whatever they bring out there especially in this kind of way should be should not be ignored should, not, should be looked at seriously same way i usually believe that everybody should be uh, listening everybody should be subscribed to those bill gates notes everybody should follow him on twitter everybody should because he's one of those people who have uh, are involved in so much in the world they are they've got a lot of interest in the in the food uh, i mean feeding the world also in food industries because he's got a lot of shares and a lot of friends in very powerful places. He's involved with climate uh, climate issues and he's involved in a lot of uh, things that are happening on the grassroots, such that whenever he speaks, um, you need to know uh, what he's talking about because sometimes it's a tale of the plans or of what is coming or what is being planned uh, by the powers that be for implementation. So the most telling from the word go is the title. The title is Leave the World Behind. Already, the title is telling you that um, there's something that we want you to stop and leave. It's telling you there's a, uh, there's a, you're in a certain um, mode of thinking or a certain mode way of life or a certain thing that has stopped working. And in fact, the first scene um, of the movie is that the star, the lady who is starring, um, looking outside and um, wondering about uh, what she likes about her areas or she does not like about her area it's an internal dialogue that she has uh, within herself and uh, in the end comes to the conclusion that she prefers a more quiet life a, a, a place that is less crowded a place um, that is away from the uh, buzz of the city a place that um, she'll be able to relax and have rest because of an intense kind of uh, work that she's doing so that already is a representative uh, a representation of uh, a huge percentage of the world because most of us are workers most of us are working for a living most of us are in very hectic environments and um it's because the system that you're currently living is um what we call the economic system um, and everything else is fashioned to feed the economic system from the social systems where uh, which are uh, created in order to uh, to reduce the family structure to nucleus and also to encourage uh, the a breadwinning, the breadwinning um, culture where you find um, one person lives. Actually, this is how it began in the rural Africa when colonialism was introduced. That um, they took out the first of all the males from the villages so that they could go to the cities, and afterwards, you'll find their wives followed and their children. And so that's how the nuclear family was established in Africa. But of course, it was already in existence in. Um, in other areas of the world, but Africa is a late comer in the current economic system. So, uh, and slavery is um, one of the uh, one of the things that were used also to feed into the current uh, economic system. And you see this representation with the ship that uh, gets grounded on the beach. The name of the ship also is the name of um, one of the ships that uh, in the 16th 
um, or 17th centuries were carrying slaves. So it's uh, very telling that they pit uh, a slavery ship, a uh, ship that was carrying slaves to the Americas to, to be grounded. So you can see slavery was part of the foundations of the, uh, of the current systems, especially with the bringing in of the entire um, world into one system where we are all serving and working to feed into one pipeline and system which uh, brings us to organizations like um, the UN and um, organizations that uh, rule over the and monitor the economic wellness and uh, funding, financing, education. All our systems are not, um, none of them is, uh, is just um, out of the blues. They are all they are all very well planned, so we are on a power blackout. So the ship that is a representation of slavery gets grounded on the beach, uh, which is um, it's a prophetic uh, tale of um, or uh, a disclosure of uh, the system that uh, had its, its basis on the um, or was fashioned after a lot of the elements of slavery. So they are telling you that this has come to an end, and no wonder the first. Um, in the, from the year to 2019, you had uh, stories of uh, the year of return in places like Ghana, where um, they, they invited people who had been whose uh, ancestors had been sold to come back uh, to the country and um, sort of begin their return journey by first discovery. And those who settled, those who decided to settle, their journey has been made a little easier, especially in West African countries where visas are, and visas are being issued. Uh, more easily for visitors and even some people have uh, gotten um, some people have gotten um, citizenship so the family leaves the world behind literally and goes to what I think was an Airbnb uh, because uh, the Airbnb uh, the person the owner later joins them after they discover that there's something wrong with uh, with what's happening um, in the area they discover that the lights are going off and before that even on their way A lot more is revealed in the artwork. The first thing um, is that starting Kwanza with the with the first house, where the first uh, couple um, is at their home, the walls are painted blue, just um, a sky blue. And as I looked on the sky blue, I couldn't I couldn't um, I just got the feeling of uh, the ocean, the calm ocean. Or maybe the calm star because it was just sky blue, just blue, solid, all the walls. And the funny thing is that it was actually a wooden, um, a wooden, uh, it, it, is it called a fa facade, whereby the wall is uh, is faced with a with a wooden cardboard and um, these joints that have little wooden strips. So it was really. Um, a very interesting choice of decoration because uh, you're wondering if you have such a nice background why would you paint it blue because it wasn't um, it's it wasn't adding so much uh, to the room generally it was just out of place the blue but it was a very calming blue uh, which was probably showing the calm before uh, before the storm and something else on the first um, on the first um, on the first night when the couple is asleep in their bed and on the day when the moon or that uh, that mysterious object passes behind be before or is it to cover the the red um, the red sun or the red luminary so on that night when they went to sleep there's a mural uh, a mural as big as the wall literally on the uh, on the head on the wall that is on the head of their bed so when they're going to sleep and it's a mural of um, of the ocean so when they're going to sleep the water, or maybe it's the angle of the, um, maybe it's the angle of the uh, of the camera, but uh, the camera does a lot of um, bird's eye view angles. So this uh, this ocean looks like it's here when they're going to sleep, and on the next day, when they wake up after the the passing, it's it's this high. The ocean has gone high. So already, what uh, they're telling you subtly is that um, you've gotten inside inside something because uh, you know in dreams uh, things like water the presence of water and uh, sinking can um, is a harbinger for danger or for attack or for something unpleasant being on the way so this is what the water that was at the back was representing because it's now over overhead and uh, if it was real it would have swept them by uh, that time 
and there are a lot of instances of uh, of water coming inland. Although that time it was after um, after the downing of uh, the jumbo jet, which was the second one. And all this, remember the connection with water. First of all, the jumbo jet um, lands on water, pushes the water so high, so far that it ruins, it sweeps into houses, sweeps off the personal belongings of this house out into the field and in the process maybe, maybe because the dwellers of the house are never shown, maybe because some injuries of people but um, there's this lady that was saying in Spanish that something bad had happened to her and we don't know if it was the water because you can't hear Spanish. Also the coming of the ship from the ocean and getting grounded on the, on the, um, on the sand was also a harbinger of um, of water because this is a this is a being you know ships are usually called they usually personalized as living things for various super, uh, superstitious reasons that the sailors adopt in order to get protection out in the ocean so this ship when it was coming and grounding it was actually a representation of water invading the land in uh, uh, that is uh, one of the things that we uh, we interpret in dreams when you see the other animals that live in the ocean coming out or animals um, of vessels that uh, ordinarily function on water, when they ground into the the land following you, it means that something bad is uh, about to happen to you. So this is a message. This is the hidden message of the of the movie. Uh, you'll find another uh, water symbolism in the coming of the flamingos who are invading their swimming pool later in the day. The children swimming in the pool. So um, this is uh, one of the ways that the movie used water as a symbol. Um, or as a harbinger in foretelling um, the coming of something bad. They use the water and they use the eclipse and they've also used um, So the couple, uh, when they came to the house in order to pass time, were playing a game of Jenga, um, which crumbled when the new visitors came and they were telling them about something that had just happened in the city. So that was a tell, a harbinger telling you that it was a time of destruction, which is something that I've been saying for uh, quite some time, that uh, this time of destruction is not really so much to do with men because it will happen with or without the assistance of men. So uh, it has to do with the kind of powers that are at work, not human powers, but actually supernatural powers. Because the reason why um, I'm saying and why we have angels that are of a more destructive origin as opposed to the softer building ones and increasing ones is that uh, we're on, we on a bridge from one, uh, one civilization to the next. So that's why I started with explaining um, a lot about the civilization because we've been in... Um, We've been in a system that has been at work for hundreds, hundreds of years. It didn't just start on slavery. Slavery was building on the uh, Industrial Revolution. It came to enrich the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution in itself came to enrich the, um, the Agrarian Revolution, which in fact inspired slavery somehow because people saw now uh, the Agrarian Revolution that way happened in, in Europe. That's the one that we get taught about in um, in school, but I'm sure Sumerians had their own revolution, the Mayans and the uh, South American Meso or Mesoamerican civilizations had their own agrarian revolutions from what we are seeing the architects uh, bringing out of the mud, out of the fallen uh, civilization. And that is something that we need to look up or at when we're thinking of our future, because these are people also who built, and at some point something happened, and the building kind of ended and ushered now our world into being. Speaking of artwork, there's a mural in the um, in the sitting room of the of the house where the couple is staying and the visitors. So uh, during the beginning, the first uh, scenes or the first cuts, you can see that the mural looks like um, story buildings, which are white on a back uh, a background which is uh, black. Some people say that this could mean the race relation race relationship because this comes out. Uh, when these two families meet, you can see there's a little bit of tension, a little bit of uh, insinuation of economic uh, abilities, a little bit of uncomfortableness. So the white mural changes over time. Uh, it starts with clear cut lines. Um, then as the film progresses, the, uh, the clear cut lines start to 
uh, fade and there's a uh, mingling between the white and the black and the last shot of the paint actually shows a pretty mangled up uh, mixture of black and white so you can't really tell this structure from this structure. The structures no longer exist, which um, I believe the people insinuating that it portrays um, the fading away of race relationships, I, I do agree with them because when uh, you all find yourself in trouble, race will not be uh, the first worry. And a lot of misconceptions that have been built into our psyche in the last few hundred years will, um, will be uh, visible as the um, as the, um, the lies, uh, to say the least, that uh, they actually are. And their purpose, actually, which is the maintenance of a certain um, classism in the world, this is the purpose of racism. It's all about classism. You can see it perfectly applied in places like India, where the lighter you are, the higher you are in the, in the caste system. So a lot of um, human, um, human beliefs will be broken, will be put to, uh, to discredit. A lot of religions will be uh, will fall uh, because their foundations will crumble people will be like you've been telling us to wait for this this and that why is this happening right now you've been telling us that this will follow by the way the dark um the darkness that keeps invading this video is actually power blackouts in the area and it's been a problem since the solar flares started intensifying i believe that there's a lot of interruption with the satellites a lot of interruption with the electric power grid supply because you've got this massive uh, massive uh, blows of energy um, probably getting attracted to the electric grid so um, it's been a problem in the last few days and it's actually one of the reasons that I think that this eclipse that was uh, that overshadowed that luminary that was in the sky was actually um, a very present uh, experience that we are dealing with unknowingly so not only do the race relations fade away but also the infrastructure. The infrastructure will not be able to stand what's coming, whether it's conflicts, whether it's climate. You've, you've noticed there's a lot of um, emphasis, uh, especially after COVID, there's a lot of emphasis on climate change. And in fact, one of the things that Bill Gates uh, said, he was asked um, if there's anything because he had foretold the coming of COVID. Somebody asked him, what should we uh, watch out for in future? And one thing he said for sure, and he emphatically uh, has been uh, preaching about and uh, raising awareness, holding uh, conferences um, and even all kinds of preparation, it's climate change. Climate change. And I'll tell you this. That thing that we saw in this movie, that, that eclipsing, that's a change in climate. It's a change in, um, in um, the, the radiation that is coming from our luminary. It's a change. Um, I don't know if you heard that there's usually a sudden cold that hits the earth whenever uh, in the places where there's uh, an eclipse. So that is a telltale sign, a huge one, of climate change because it's uh, directly touching on the, on the heavenly um, star system that uh, is directly feeding uh, plants, feeding our skin for vitamins, some of us, and sometimes even harming us with UV. So when that thing begins to act up, we should, not, uh, we should be uh, ready to have a lot of incidences that could be really um, shaking, earth-shaking, uh, shaking to the infrastructure because they will touch the satellites, they will touch the electric grid. Remember the electric grid is just wavelengths passing through uh, copper wires uh, from one end to one end. So whenever there's an excess energy getting in, top, in contact with these wires, you have shots. Whenever there's this excess energy getting in contact with particles in the, um, in the atmosphere, you can get even some weather phenomenon that you are not expecting because it could spark even um, even lightning uh, in places that are not um, that are not uh, expected to have lightning. Now, something that uh, we've been watching as people who watch the sun through the experts who usually post online, and there are many who um, do what is called solar solar weather forecast or uh, space weather forecast. It's a very important thing if you're studying the weather forecast for just the sun, for just the clouds. You need to go above and also study what's happening in the space in general because we are in the space, so we cannot fail to be affected. But by whatever is happening in the vicinity, if something goes nova, we feel it. It gets to us. So one of the things that we usually look out for and we're usually careful about is when uh, the solar flares are intense. Like when we have a next flare, we usually wait for earthquakes. When we have um, a, a, a spot in the sun which is uncovered, sometimes the the, uh, the what they call photons that usually cover the sun sometimes they get um the sun gets declocked and sometimes you can find it's a huge part that is darker on the on the images that you see on this 
on these satellites that NASA has been sharing, which is something I think is very important that NASA featured very prominently from the T-shirt of the girl. It was just there, and NASA, remember, is a space program. It's a space agency. They deal with space. So here, we need to um, to acknowledge the uh, the role that uh, space has been given in this movie and in the warnings. And remember, the girl uh, the girl was wearing the NASA T-shirt. Was the person who was um, she was the first person to notice that the Wi-Fi went off when she was on the vehicle on the way to the new house. Friends uh, got frozen at a certain uh, point, and from that point, she was never able to to watch it um, any further on her iPad or a notepad, whatever it was, until the end scene where she finds a bunker. And so, uh, so important that it was a bunker because it was right before there was an announcement that people should find shelter. Now, their parents at that time are clueless about whether they should. Um, what they should even um, do at that point, because at that point they are looking for this girl who is already sheltered. They were still hoping that the government will come to save us, which is, uh, it's a little impractical because the government, let's say even in my country here, we are a group of 50 million people. Even if the government was rich, I doubt that they'll be able to construct bunkers for 50 million people. Maybe China has done this, but that's a very small percentage of their population. Some uh, larger countries have managed to construct, especially the countries that participated in the Second and First World War, bunkers became very important, and so most of them are actually remnants of this uh, First and Second World War. And isn't, isn't it um, very convenient that at the time when the sun is beginning to act up and the weather is beginning to act up, there are also wars that are um, encouraging countries, or um, there was a giving countries the ideas of building bunkers afresh, even more modern bankers, and you'll see that most of these old nations, that uh, by all I mean old World War, World War I and II nations, um, have started rebuilding bankers to accommodate even uh, more of their populations. So if um, the sugar hitting the fan moment happens, um, there's a high likelihood that the, the most survivors, most of the survivors will be from the people who will have places to, to shield from the intensity of the sun, from the intensity of maybe um, even uh, the extremities of the weather that we haven't been really getting, uh, but uh, are expected to um, to join us uh, sooner than later with all the climate change uh, gospel, which I believe we should take seriously because uh, the government may tell you it's climate change, but whatever is coming has a lot to do with climate. So it is true that climate change is coming because what else would you, would you call it? What else would you call what I've just described if not climate change? What name would you give it? if you are a leader of 7 billion people, who you needed to prepare at least some of them, and how many of them would you save? Okay.